back to another episode of the Crime with Kylie podcast. I hope you're in the mood for a little midweek murder case because that is what I have in store for you. I wasn't planning on making another episode this week, but this case just came out and it sparked so many different thoughts that I wanted to share with you guys. Quick PSA before we get started, we will be discussing the sensitive topic of child death and child murder. In this case, the death and murder of an 18-month-old little boy. If that is too much for today, I completely understand and I will see you for another episode. This case seems to have began on January 13th or January 14th of 2024 when a little boy was rushed to the hospital. 18-month-old Jackson Williams was rushed to Phoebe Sumter Medical Center completely unresponsive. For reference, this hospital is in Georgia and they performed life-saving measures on the little boy in the ER. Sadly though, he did end up passing away due to his injuries. Although his official autopsy has not yet been released, it seems as though those injuries were blunt force trauma to the head, resulting in a skull fracture and a brain bleed. Now, Jackson was initially taken to the hospital by his father, who is either known as Juwan, Ja, Julian, or Javante. And I wish I could tell you which one is the correct one, but different articles and different news sources are all saying different things as far as his name and his son's name. According to the hospital, the little boy's birth certificate said that his name was Romeo Ingles. However, his family identified him as either Jackson Drew, or JD for short, or as Jackson Williams. Because his GoFundMe says Jackson Williams, that is what I am referring to him as. Now, the potential reason for Jackson's name being different is because allegedly his birth mom named him Romeo Ingles at the hospital when he was first born, but then when his father got full custody of him, he renamed him Jackson or JD. And from what little we can pull from the GoFundMe description, it seems as though Juwan turned his entire life around for his son, and his son was the main focal point of his life. At this point, Juwan has not spoken publicly because he is, of course, grieving the loss of his son and, of course, also processing the complete betrayal of someone he thought he could trust. And that now leads us to talk about Trinity Pogue. What we know about Trinity Pogue is that she is 18 years old and has been Miss Donna Sonville since 2012. And I'm not a pageant girl whatsoever, nor have I ever been, so everything I'm about to share with you I found after looking into this case. So Trinity has been Miss Donna Sonville of Georgia since 2012, and Donna Sonville is an extremely small town with a population of just under 3,000 people. So I'm not trying to talk badly about the pageant itself, but it doesn't seem like there was ever enough people to have a real competition. And the main reason I'm saying this is because when you look up Miss Donna Sonville exactly how it's spelled, not much comes up. Most of the searches are going to show you Donaldsonville, and a lot of articles in this case have gotten that wrong. I believe Donaldsonville with a D is a Louisiana pageant. And that's actually a bigger pageant with like a scholarship of, of Miss Donaldsonville, Little Miss Donaldsonville, and Teen Donaldsonville. And that's a whole scholarship pageant thing. That's completely separate from this case. Now, I don't know how long Trinity's Instagram is going to remain active for because oftentimes in these cases, someone comes through whether it's the person themselves, although she's in jail right now, so I don't know how that would be possible, or a family member, or even Instagram themselves because they don't want to be associated with that and they will go through and delete murderers or alleged murderers' accounts. So, on the screen right now, you'll see a whole bunch of screenshots and everything from her Instagram. And as I'm going through it, you can also see that she is just really proud of herself for these pageants and competing. She seems to have a love for it. And she also, aside from the Miss Donna Sonville, Donna Sonville? I please correct my pronunciation. She also competed in the peanut festival pageant. And this is a national pageant. Now, as I was reading the rules for this peanut pageant, it seems that their first rule is to be a good and moral person. You cannot be in any active cases. You cannot be pregnant or have given birth to a child and you cannot have committed any crimes. So if all of these charges that we're going to get into really soon, don't worry, end up being true, it doesn't seem like Trinity is going to compete again. But when it comes to Trinity and these pageants in the media now, what I'm seeing a lot on her Instagram and on TikTok in general are just very hateful comments regarding the way that she looks, saying that pageants have no standards and that she is a fat pig and things like that. And she's she's been charged with the murder, okay? That's undeniable. I'm not saying be nice to a murderer or an alleged murderer. We should not be criticizing her for the way that she looks, okay? That's that's not okay. 
That's not cool. If that's your opinion, just keep it to yourself. In other words, it seems as though people would rather attack her for her looks instead of her poor character and judgment. Anyways, I think I already mentioned this, but Trinity is a freshman at Georgia Southwestern State University. And this university has certain rules about dorms and visitation that are pretty strict and, you know, not having strangers, people who, you know, don't live on campus in your dorms past certain hours, etc. Upon referring to their exact student handbook, their rules on guests in particular, a guest cannot stay more than two consecutive nights and a guest cannot stay more than four nights total in a calendar month. Additionally, which I think this is one of the rules that they had a problem with with Trinity, is that the host must accompany the guest at all points, like traveling throughout the hallways and traveling throughout the campus in general. And from what is alleged, and I'm sorry I have to say that word right now, but this is just from people who lived on the campus coming forward on social media, people who knew Trinity, people who knew Juan. They said that Juan and his son had visited Trinity several times. And in some ways, these visits violated the student handbook rules. And this whole case actually made Georgia Southwestern State University put out a notice, a reminder of their guest rules in this past week. But Trinity was dating Juan, and it seems as though... It's been allegedly said that they were dating for about a year, but they kept their relationship on the down low. Now, I have not been able to figure out Juwan's real age or anything like that, but that means that when they would have started dating, she would have been 17. And I can see that factor combined with him being a single dad and maybe a little bit older than her as being a pretty decent reason to want to keep things on the down low. I mean, Trinity did like some of his pictures on Instagram, but there's no photos, videos, anything like that of them together, at least publicly online. Also, Trinity's parents didn't even know that she was dating anyone, so this news of her dating him and him having a child completely new to them and sadly they had to find out in this way. Going back to January 13th or 14th of 2024, Juwan and Trinity and baby Jackson Williams were hanging out in her dorm room and Juwan wanted to get them all some food so he left for a very short amount of time and he entrusted Trinity to take care of Jackson and just watch him for a few minutes. However, when Juwan came back with food, his son was acting very strange and quickly became unresponsive. When he became unresponsive, Juwan and Juwan alone rushed his son to the hospital. And then it was actually the Georgia Southwestern State University on-campus police who then reached out to the regular police department in Georgia to ask them to investigate this death. This was the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, or the GBI. The day that the investigation was requested was January 14th of 2024. And we do not know all of the details of the investigation yet, but what we do know is that they conducted a search, they collected evidence, and they conducted a few interviews. And as for evidence, one thing that's been alleged so far is in regards to Trinity's phone, and allegedly she was googling and searching things on how to harm a toddler up to a week before his murder. This has not been confirmed yet, and often when cases are first aired to the news, not a lot of information is known, and we do find out a lot about it beforehand from people who know the people involved, who live there, etc. They're on the, they're on the in, okay? So, I'm taking and collecting information from people who say that they're on the in, and I'm giving it to you guys. When all the details from the police investigation come out, I'm prepared for some of this information, a good amount of what I'm saying to be right, and I'm also prepared for potentially a good amount of it to be wrong. So, I just want to let you guys know that's why I keep saying the word alleged, allegedly, etc. Now, what is for sure known has something to do with Trinity's interviews. Okay, so when she was questioned by the police department about what happened to Jackson Williams or JD or Romeo, she kept saying that he fell off the bed. And the problem with that story, which she probably thought she could say because she was the only one alone in the dorm room with him, is that his injuries that were diagnosed at the hospital, found out about at the hospital, they were not consistent with a child falling off of the bed. Jackson suffered blunt force trauma to the head. And if you're a parent or if you have a niece or if you have a nephew, I'm sure we have all had or at least heard of little mishaps where a baby will roll off the bed, roll off the couch, etc. And oftentimes the baby is fine. You should always take them into the doctor, take them into the hospital to ensure that they are fine. However, 
because of how their bones are all connected and how they're kind of like squishy before they're fully developed adults, children falling off the bed, rolling off the bed, etc., they are usually fine, okay? There's not blunt force trauma to the head. There's usually not a brain bleed and a skull fracture. But once again, just as a PSA, if that happens, always take them to the doctor because you never know. But in this case, it's pretty obvious that Jackson did not just fall off the bed. Now, for the murder of Jackson, Trinity was arrested on January 19th of 2024, and she was handed three different charges. She was given a felony murder charge, aggravated battery, and cruelty to children in the first degree. She was then booked into the Sumter County Detention Facility, also in Georgia, and she is being held without bond. Now, a potential motive that Juwan allegedly mentioned is that Trinity was supposedly jealous of Jackson and his relationship to his father. For instance, the attention that Juwan would give Jackson. So Juwan has said that he knew that Trinity was jealous, or at least that is what he is claiming right now. And of course, that is absolutely horrible, but the problem is that it is not unheard of. A case that I recently covered in short form, which I also want to do a long form video on, is the case of Iris Alfara, and she was an 18-month-old living in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Her mom, Emily Alfara, did every single thing for Iris, and Iris actually went part-time to her father for visitation. Her father's name was Bailey, and Bailey lived in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, but he had a live-in girlfriend. I believe her name is Alicia Owens, and she ended up just now getting charged with Iris's murder. Iris was murdered last June. It was on June 25th to be exact and Iris was visiting her dad and her dad's girlfriend because you know the girlfriend lived there. And the dad left for just a few minutes to go to the grocery store but when he came back his daughter was unresponsive. She was taken to the hospital, they performed life-saving measures on her but sadly baby Iris just like baby Jackson ended up passing away. And what was found is that Alicia had been feeding her things like batteries acetone, water beads, etc. And the autopsy concluded that she passed away due to acetone poisoning. And Alicia had been googling things for literal months, like since February of 2023, things that are toxic for children. And of course, some people like tried to excuse this as, oh, you're just trying to make sure what you can't have near babies. Okay, no, no, no. She fed her nail polish remover. She literally fed the baby that, and she actually attempted to take Iris's life a few months before that when Iris was taken to the hospital and it was found that she had batteries and a screw and 20 water beads in her system. And apparently the child investigators of Newcastle came to check everything out and they concluded that the house with the anger that's a lot of people in the community was still were okay angry. to visit. They wanted so immediate justice. They we definitely the failed in this case and now water beads Emily, and batteries Iris's were mom, one of her attempts Emily's at parents, Iris's child. grandparents, and the rest of her family are suffering just because of that one evil woman and the fact that Iris was allowed to continue to go over there for visitation, even though Emily and her family were actively advocating to stop that visitation from happening. So sadly, this whole concept of girlfriends getting jealous of their significant other's babies is very, very real. And I don't think any of you listening are like this at all, but I feel like it would be such common sense to not date someone who has a child if you are not okay with that person keeping their child as the top priority, honestly, I feel like in a partner, you should want them to put their child first because that shows how good of a person they are and how much how much they care. As I know I've said many, many times in these episodes, we do not think like how they do. There is something, there's a wire, maybe a few wires, crossed in their brains that we just cannot comprehend. And that concludes today's episode. Once again, you guys, I am so sorry for all of the allegedlies and the iffiness on the information, but as more concrete information is released, I do plan on doing updates on this case, whether it's podcast form, short form, etc. But I do hope that you guys got something out of this episode, maybe learned something new. And if you see someone who's a single parent who has a child, maybe just give them a little reminder if they're entering back into the dating world to be a bit vigilant and a little less trusting of 
who they're bringing their child around. I feel like as I keep finding out about these cases that those types of lessons really do need to be broadcasted everywhere because I know a lot of us out there are often very trusting people and although that is a fantastic trait, as my dad always says, trust but verify, kind of run them through a bigger of tests, don't bring your child around them right away, etc. And I will probably see you guys this weekend for a normal long form video episode. I am looking forward to that. All right, bye.